So this is a guided rappel? It will be eventually. Right now we're just setting up a rappel to get the first person down. Okay. So, clove hitch. This could be any block. Okay. Figure eight on a bite. So we're gonna look at a couple different ways to tension the guided rappel. We're gonna look at it from the top and then we're gonna look at it from the bottom. There's a couple different ways to do it. Okay. Either side. So to start with, I'm just gonna go down and set an anchor around the giant boulder down there and then attach the end of the rope to it. So as the first person down, I'm gonna clear the obstacle, find an anchor and build it, and then we'll pick up from there. Okay, and then we repel down on that line? Not yet, I'm gonna come back up and then we're gonna look at how to set up the guided repel. Okay. So for now, I'm just going down, I'm gonna build an anchor, and then we're gonna attach the rope to the anchor, the other end of the rope. Yeah, you'll see it when you get down there. It's just, the anchor is a rope looped around that rock twice and then tied off. A little better starting point. So essentially what we're trying to do at this point is pull this rope tight enough to keep us up out of whatever obstacle we're trying to avoid. A few different ones here. So okay. the first thing you need is an attachment point to the rope so you can pull on it. All right. It can be a rope grab. I usually use a prussic because if you pull a prussic harder than you should, it will slip. If you pull a rope grab harder than you should, you can completely desheath the rope. So we shouldn't get enough force to do that with a three to one system, but just to be on the safe side, I'll usually use the prussic. It also gives you the ability to release it if you use a VT prussic. So we're going to start by just tying that here. And you're tying a VT I'm prussic? I'm tying a VT because of the releasability of it. It's not required to do it that way, it just gives you another option for releasing this whole system later. So I know how to do a VT Prusik. Mm -hmm. Nicole, are you cool on, good on that? Yes, but I don't want to review it. Okay. So once I put this carabiner in, I want to flip it up so the basket portion of the carabiner is up. It makes it easier to add things into it here okay. than if the gate was down. Right, so, so far I've got an attachment point. I have not locked that yet. I'm going to come up here into the anchor. And above the, above the master point knot here, I'm going to clip another carabiner. Just kind of gives me a place to work from. It's out of the way of this. Out of the way of the lock off. Of this block, yes. Yeah, the block. So I'm going to take that through here. So that's a two. This is actually still a one-to-one. -one. There's no mechanical okay, one advantage one. yet. Okay. When you go through the upper portion, all you're doing is changing the direction of the pole. Okay. So when you're looking at mechanical advantage, the number of strands that are actually lifting the load is the number of mechanical advantage you have in a simple system. Okay. So right now I only have one lifting, and this is pulling back towards the load instead of up towards the anchor. So I have a one-to-one -one here. Okay. If I bring this down, I'm trying to keep as much twisting out of this as possible. Once I loop it through here, I now have one, two, and three that are all lifting towards the anchor. So this is a three to one okay. mechanical advantage. That's the bare bones basics of mechanical advantage. You want to lock everything down here, lock everything here, you're ready to pull at this point. So, but I this just have is the basic. Rope. This is very basic. Okay. So at this point, the rope is running over the carabiners. So I do have a three to one mechanical advantage, but I'm losing a large portion of the efficiency because of the friction of the rope over the carabiner. So you're roughly 53% efficiency at each of these bends around the carabiners. If you add a pulley in there, you can increase that at each point. So where this is 53%, if I switch that out and run it through a pulley. So you're running, yeah, the second. And this is a rock exotica. This is, yeah. Yeah. And this would go in here. So I still have the same amount of mechanical advantage, but I have a greatly increased efficiency. If I had another one up here, it would be even greater. 
because it's holding it. There's fr there's there's little teeth in there that hold it. No, there's no teeth on this. Okay, it's just, it's just a pulley. Only reduce, re eliminates all the friction in the system at that point. Okay. All right. So if I pull on this, it's much smoother than it would be with just the rope. Let's see, I can get that all. But you're the only one that's keeping it from sliding back. Yes, right now I'm keeping it on my own just from sliding back. Okay. All right. Yeah. So at this point, to hold it there, pull it up as high as I can, keep it tight. You can tie a mule hitch here around everything. Like so. I totally can't see it. Sorry, That's I'll okay. do it again. But that mule hitch keeps it from going back down, and you'd want to finish this with an overhand. Pull that out of there so we can see what we're doing. So this tail here, you just go around everything and make an overhand. And up and then down. And that yeah. keeps that from coming apart while I adjust this block. So now I can pull all the slack through and move the block to here. Okay. All right, so I've gained all this tension that I didn't have before. Once your block is back in place, I can undo my overhand. Pull on the tail to release the wheel hitch and settle it back down onto the block. And at that point, I could take all this apart so it's clean and ready to retrieve when I'm done. This. So that was a progress capture advice. Capture pulley. This one's called the Spock. Um, Petzl makes another one called the Micro Traction. So essentially, that just goes in like so. This closes. And that goes into the carabiner. So now when I pull this, I don't have to hold it there. I don't have to tie a mule hitch. I just pull and it stays wherever I let go. Yeah. So I can pull it and get up here and just keep getting it. I don't have to ever hold the actual yep. weight of it. Okay. Then to get this back off, this is one of the reasons we have the press it here. So we can come up here to detension it. break that free in theory. <laughs> there we go. Because I can slide that prusset, I can get away with using this and still get the system off when I'm done. Now there's enough slack to remove all of mm -hmm. this. Alright. Okay, so it's under. Yeah, so the loop comes under so it captures everything, then you're just taking a bite and passing it through that loop. Mm -hmm. It all together. And that's a mule hitch. That's a mule hitch. And you pull it far enough to and do. Then, yeah, it kind of snucks down. You pull this out because this is basically a rip cord. If someone pulls this, it releases even right. under yeah. tension. So you want to safety that off by just taking this big enough that you can tie an overhand. Make sure it's a full overhand. So if I just went through here, that's just a half hitch. That's not doing anything. Right. Gotta make sure it's all the way around itself and do an overhand. Okay. So that's a mule hitch. With an overhand. So wrap it around, just single strand. Single strand, okay. Wrap it around three times. Well, what am I doing with the double? That's a regular prusik. Okay. And That's an asymmetric, no, symmetric prusik. Yeah. Is what you were about to do. So That's how I always do it. Yeah. Pull them both up. Okay. See how you only got two wraps? Yep. So it's easy to like kind of have a half wrap there mm -hmm. if you're holding one down. From there, you want to even out the tails, perfect. And the top one crosses the wraps first. Yeah. And the bottom one crosses the top one. And keep it kind of compact that way. Mm -hmm. and just keep it kind of snug as you braid it behind and in front. Yeah. Crossing both opposite sides, just like that. And again, keep this distance closer. See how much looser that made it. So you can keep all that slack maintained or eliminated, I should say. Yeah? It doesn't look great. Yeah, it's close. We had one wrap at the very end that looked like it didn't actually go around, but that will still work. Let's go ahead and clip that. Okay. And you call that just an attachment point? A pull point or? Just the concept, yes. The hitch uh -huh. is the VT prusik, or Val Dutentress. Hitch. It's a hitch. Okay. So you could also 
but that's a remove you want a removable hitch. I did a releasable so we can use the progress capture. It doesn't have to be a releasable prosthetic. It could be a standard three wrap prosthetic as well. Okay. Um, it's just you have to release the load somewhere else in that scenario. Okay. Okay. And from here, we're attaching this, yeah? Mm -hmm. You don't need to lock that just yet. Okay. I'm not that one. And then this one comes up here. Yeah, they call it the shelf, but they're not there. Okay. Just spin that so the basket's down as well. Towards me. That. That, okay. And if you have a longer cordelette, you can just clip it rather than feeding the tail through. Okay. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Totally. So okay. Yeah. Red's 80 foot cordelette, she's actually good. Yeah, exactly. Rather than pulling 80 feet through, just use the open. Yeah. Through. And then if I was just using the one, I would go here, mm -hmm. this. Yeah. It's a little bit longer first. Now you can lock everything. And that's if I was just using the one. And this is a three to one with a pull pulley. You'll hitch it off? Mm -hmm. Okay. Not losing the finger. So you basically have to keep tension here mm -hmm. while you tie the mule. That's hitch. why I should have used this one. This makes it easier, yes. Should but I, this is still an option. Should I back up? It's up to Try you. Try with this one. Review the review the knot with me. That is, this is just a good experience for knot. So if I can hold it upside down and backwards. So from here, I'm gonna turn it on itself. Mm -hmm. Go under all three. Go under all of them. Still keeping this tension here. And the closer you can get it to the pulley, the better, because okay. it's going to slip until mm -hmm. it gets to that. Yes. So any slack you leave here is tension you've just lost, you're trying to create. Okay. And there, you're going to overhand that around. Okay. All right, so you're just going to set the rope on the cam, mm -hmm. kind of get it in front of it, and just drag it the direction it would go, and it pulls it open and drops into place. And you can see the arrow, and you yeah, can see that there. the teeth are facing up. Yeah. If I tried to go the other way, it just doesn't do anything. It only right. opens one direction. Do it again. Reach. So that's backwards. Mm -hmm. Which side are you pulling on? Yeah. That doesn't go in there anymore, just the device. The hole that's in your right hand. Yep. Yeah. Just spin that whole device. So this hole is what's getting clipped. So yep. you can just flip it. That's that way up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, now I understand. Thank you. Okay, yeah. This is, yeah, that's way so much easier. Yeah. Keep this in action. Okay, so, on the load side here, not on the side you're pulling, you're just gonna do a standard three wrap pressic. So we're just gonna pass that under. And that, honestly, this pressic on this rope, the diameter difference isn't as great as it should be. You should have at least two millimeters difference. We're only one and a half here. So two millimeters smaller? Yes, the prusik should be smaller than the rope you're tying into. Okay. So maybe I should have used the VC. Because it can flatten out and tighten down farther than... So if it's too small, in this situation it's too small? In this situation the two ropes are too close in diameter. This should be another millimeter or so smaller. Okay. Just for the illustration purposes, we're going to tie this prusik. We're going to clean it all up. But isn't that a six millimeter cord? It is, but this is only a seven and a half rope. Okay. So then the loop of this is going to clip back into the carabiner the pulley's attached to. Okay. All right. Now as I pull this, so this particular shape of pulley with kind of the flared side plates is what's known as a prusik minding pulley. So what that means is as I pull this, see how it pushes the prusik for me? Right. Oh, yeah. But and if you let go, go it, it holds it. it. Holds. I pull it, the pulley finds the prusik, mm -hmm. and it settles back down. Wow. So that's another version. And option. that's a um, concentric prusik. It's just a prusik. There's, okay, just a prusik. There's no variation. This is the traditional prusik hitch. Okay. Let's pull that good and tight. Got the make on it good that way. Yep. 
And if you're adding more people, so if both of us are pulling on this, you're not mm -hmm. changing your advantage, you're just changing the amount of force that's input into the system. So the force is multiplied, but the advantage is the same. Okay. Let's say you could normally pull with 100 pounds of force, that would give it three. If we each pulled with 100, that would give it six, right? So it multiplies the force through the advantage system, but it doesn't change the fact that we still have a three to one here. It's a better room. So now I can release this. bit again. Oh yeah. Okay, there you go. And that's how you release that. So our guideline is now tensioned. Our guideline is now tensioned. Yes. So we can take all of this off because we don't want to leave this behind. We don't want to get our rope stuck because we have a whole, whole system attached to it. So we take the the three to one stuff off. Get all of that off. Bring it all up. Because that's our guide rope. Right. So how do we get on to to? So that we're just going to clip to with the tether. But for our rappel side, we're using the other side of the same rope. Oh yeah. On the non-block side. Yep. That's uh. That's interesting. Rope. Right. Yes, but how do we get across the obstacle if we're using that side to repel with? So we're going to repel on this side. We're going to clip our tether into this one. So hold this up so you can repel in midair. Awesome. So we can safety this off. It's for everyone but the last person. That's why I moved the clove hitch to the basket rather than the spine where it normally is. So I can take this. And the safety off up here. Okay. Because otherwise, if I had it on the spine, I would be cross loading this, right? Yes. And I don't honestly even love that. So now it's safetyed. Now it's safetyed. But the last person needs last to person take has that to off. That safety, yes. yes. Okay. Otherwise, your rope is not going to do that. Yeah. All right. So, what you just said is you want as short a tether as possible? Yes. To keep you up and out of the obstacle you're trying to. Avoid. Right. right. So a short tether. Well, I don't want to clip it here because it's going to drag me across the ground trying to get to the edge. Okay. You want to wait until that guide rope's mm. about here. So you can easily just clip to it. Okay. And then the other thing too is like when I reach out and clip this, uh -huh. I'm repelling like this, eventually that's going to take tension. So you have to re remember to reach around that. Got it. If you're going to use your left hand in that way. Right now I'm just repelling like normal. So I don't want to clip to that until it's, like I said, up around the waist high. Okay. Okay. Right here, reach over, clip that in. The anchors on both sides need to be very strong because you're creating immense forces between them because of the high angle of this. So you want to make sure both points are solid because if either point fails, the whole system fails. Yeah. So if this fails, Remember, we were blocked on that side, so we'll just pull through and drop you. So you need to make sure neither one of your anchors will fail. Okay. okay. And then how did you tie this off? Um, because of where it's in the rope, I tied a figure eight on a bite and then tied a figure eight follow through the head. <laughs> okay. So it's just an easy way to link something in the middle of itself. So that's a figure eight on a bite and a figure eight follow through. And the two strands that you're holding in your hand. And that's the munter. So this first one is known as the Italian 8. I'm going to start by clipping it into the big hole here. Okay. I'm going to pull this through the big opening. I'm going to twist it so the brake strand is under. Mm -hmm. So it kind of creates a locking mechanism. Step off the rope there. Oh yeah. So I'm going to add a little mechanical advantage here. I can use a pressic. I can use an ascender. Mm -hmm. Use an ascender because it's faster. So I'm going to clip something up here to create some mechanical advantage again. Mm -hmm. so we're just doing our three to one, just like we did before. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And this is where if I had that poly carabiner, I would throw it up here. But I do not, so I'm just gonna. So you just used a rope man. Mm -hmm. So I haven't used mine very often. So from there, I'm gonna take this rope, pass it through here. That gives me a three to one mechanical advantage pulling down here. So now I can pull it right here. See that kind of pinches on itself and locks? Yeah. Like so. I can just bump that up if I need more. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so now you so, have tension. That's tension. I can take this, get it out of the way. I can leave it in place in case I need to add more later. I'm gonna take this down and safety this off so it doesn't accidentally pop loose. All right, so you can just mule hitch it to the spine of to the carabiner. To the spine of the carabiner, okay. You can just overhand that off as well to keep that mule hitch from coming undone. It could be there, that could be here. You just need to tie to something so it can't release. Okay. All right, so now that's tensioned, we're good to go. Okay. So we go to release it, to retrieve our rope. Get that out, Put the wheel hitch off. We're just gonna take this and wrap it around here. Give it a good tug, see how that breaks that bend? Uh-huh. This should be able to start to feed. Oops, I lost it. So you're trying to release it? Yeah, I'm trying to release it. Yeah. But it doesn't want to. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Try to keep that flip from re-happening. Okay. Okay. So you can use that. You could also use a mutter hitch here for the progress capture. So it's the same system. You're just replacing the eight with a mutter hitch. Okay. And you're going to show us that. The load strand. So I'm going to be fighting some of the tension of the munter itself, as you can see here. Mm -hmm. You're going to pull that down, get your tension. To uh -huh. lock this off, you're going to hold this. You're going to let it... It's the wrong strand. You're going to hold this. Okay. <laughs> you're going to let it flip so it's in its upright orientation, like so. Okay. And you'll hitch it off from there. So you have to make sure you have extra tension. Again, I'm just going to overhand that to finish it off. Now that's set, and get this out of the way again so it's not in the way of the repeller. And that's another way to capture the progress. But okay. And again, just like before, to release it, you get rid of the overhand. Mm -hmm. You grab the tail and pop the mule hitch out. And then you release. Just release the tension. In the okay. Part. So the pull side, you went through and tw twisted it. Yeah, so basically the slack side is on the up rope side of the system. Okay. I can't see that. And then from here... Italian 8. Tonight, make sure I'm not how it works, the name's not as important. Only to find out that sometimes it will be important. Right? <laughs> when you're trying to communicate with other people. Perfect. And you're putting your finger through too, so that's kind of a... You kind of pin it below. Pin it below instead of, yeah. Finger blocks the hole just as well as the rope does. Right. Okay. Flip the carabiner around so the small ends on the rope man. Because you're going to be flipping that right now. Okay. All right. 
underfoot there. There we go. Yep. And that Italian thing will hold, even though we've loosened it up. Once it's tight, it will. When it's mm -hmm. loose, it's not holding anything. You have to snug it up so it doesn't flip. Okay. But that is that, that, that hasn't, uh, that's okay. shifted. Nope, it's good. I'm gonna let it go slack, Let's see what it does. Okay, yes. And pull the slack through in between the carabiner and the figure eight. That would, this one? See, that's how you can pull it down and keep it under there even better. Okay. Can you tie that off? And then this is where I knew I needed help. This is where I need help. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Okay. So you can either turn it kind of up on itself like that and then come around. Around and through. Okay. Turn it up on itself like that. Around and through. And then you... And if you've got a big enough carabiner, you can't even overhand it around the spine again as well. If you wanted to tie it around this. Okay instead of doing down here? Yeah. As long as it's overhead, it's so you can't record it and release it. Okay. So right. it's like this. If you pull this up and over, it separates it there. Okay. And then... So you can start by passing it through the anchor. If this was a quick link, I'd pull the end through. Since it's a carabiner, I'm using yep. the carabiner. Okay. So start kind of pre-tensioning it to some extent. Find where you're wanting to pull from so you have enough distance to actually tension something. And then come up here and tie an alpine butterfly. Yes. Like so. Mm -hmm. So now I have a loop up here. Right. And I'm gonna kind of measure this so I know where to tie the next thing. So we go about there, just throw a figure eight on a bite to create a termination. And a little bit more. I'm determined to drop this quick link multiple times today. You throw a beaner on it. Yes, throw a pair of beaner on that. Mm -hmm. There we go. So I'm going to come up here, and this load strand, I'm going to pass a bite of that through the alpine butterfly I tied. Oh, wow. Okay. Like so. See uh -huh. that? Yeah. And you're going to clip to that bite that you just pulled through. Lock that. Now, to tension this, all I do is pull down on this carabiner. And it creates the tension and holds it uh -huh. automatically. Okay. So if you tie anything off. Because it's cinching up through the alpine loop. Yes, the way if it pulls you... through that, you're basically doubling the length of rope here. And because this is pulling both of these at the same time, and this is pulling everything at the same time, it's not moving anything in between. So even without tying it off, it's not moving when I hang on that. To loosen it back up, you're just gonna grab the carabiner, pull it back up towards this, and it's loose again. Wow. Okay. Like so. Okay. Okay, go for it. And then... When you're judging where to put the butterfly, keep in mind like where the repeller is going to come down. Make sure they can reach the ground before... Right. They hit the okay. here to make a bigger loop like pull some slack through that okay even after you get the wraps done just kind of hold everything in place pull a little through there there you go a little more okay and then tuck it up and under there we go got it i like it 
All right. <laughs> and that was where I just shut down. <laughs> Ryan. So the right hand you need a loop on the end to attach to? Yep. And here, you're going to clip a carabiner to the loop you just made. And then pull a bite through the butterfly on the downstream side. I guess I made that up just barely. A bite, just a bite. And then clip to that bite. Yep. Yeah? And pull it towards the other to tighten it. This is where the distance is coming in. You've only got this much to tighten with. It's as tight as you can go now, because there's nowhere else to go. Yes. So, judging those distances, uh, just comes through some practice. Watch the left arm as that takes tension. There you go. So that, that's what you're that's telling, what he was us. telling us. Yep. Yeah, we were like, huh? <laughs> okay.